The moment of reckoning is upon us. Time to reveal the books I have chosen for the spooky, scary skeleton Halloween readathon. Hello, my name is Flossie. Thank you for joining me. I always look forward to your visit. Yay, you made it. I've been waiting for you. Today I am going to reveal to you the books that I have chosen for this readathon. I am choosing to read one book per prompt. You can combine prompts and get one prompt and one prompt and one prompt to equal one. So three can equal one. But I'm not going to do that. I am going to read a book per prompt. That means that I am going to have a heavy reading month in the month of October because I don't typically read that many books in a month. Okay, so I am going to show you the bag of books. Here it is. It's a thing of beauty. And I cannot wait to show you what is in this gosh darn bag. So I'm going to read a prompt and then I'm going to pull the book out of the bag. All right, here we go. Prompt number one, read a classic horror novel. It must be at least 30 years old. Okay, so I am going with Stephen King, Misery. Uh, when was this published? I should have taken the time to look before I put this out here, but alas, I did not. But no worries, it won't take long, right? Right? <laughs> Pressure. No! Um, no! Ah, there it is. I couldn't find it. Okay. 1987, so this definitely qualifies. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. Um, I don't know what it's about. I know something about a bed and a guy's feet and something about him being held prisoner. And that is all I know about that. And I think I'm going to get a quick lesson in horror when it comes to that. Prompt number two, read a fiction or nonfiction book about a serial killer. Where do you see the book that I picked? I chose, yes indeedy, I chose Ted Bundy, Conversations with a Killer, The Death Row Interviews by Stephen G. McCod and Hugh Anisworth. Yeah, Anisworth. Sounds good to me. Okay, what goes on in the mind of a serial killer? I'm going to find out. And boy, oh boy, books like these are right up my alley because I just love the investigation. I do. And I love to weigh the, the what. And I love the way the mind works and how, like, this person could be so prim and proper and this person not so much so that one for sure for sure is going to be interesting okay on with the show number three read a book that has an orange cover or has the word orange in the title okay i'm going with this one i got this one at my local library sale the dead in their vaulted arches uh Flavia de Luce novel, Alan Bradley. I do not know what this is about. On a spring morning, 1951, 11 year old chemist and aspiring detective, Flavia de Luce gathers with her family at the railroad station, awaiting the return of her long lost mother, Harriet. Yet upon the train's arrival in the English village of Bishop Lacey, Flavia is approached by a tall stranger who whispers a cryptic message into her ear. Moments later, he is dead, mysteriously pushed under the train by someone in the crowd. Who was this man? What did his words mean? And why were they intended for Flavia? Okay, number four. Read a book with ghosts or ghouls. 
I chose, I chose this one, a hundred billion ghosts. I bought this maybe two years ago and on the shelf it sits, nope, one year ago, April um, of 2023, on the shelf it sits, but it's time for me to take it down and find out what it's about. Ryan is always waiting for his life to begin socially awkward and eternally living in the moment right after this one. Ryan's existence is hopelessly stuck. Then in a world altering cosmic event, the ghosts of everyone who ever died suddenly become visible to the living. Now every house is haunted and the streets are filled with wandering souls. Death, once humankind's greatest mystery, is just a few inconvenient moments and then back to work on Monday. In this strange new world, Ryan decides that since he can't seem to get a handle on the whole life thing, he might as well get a head start on death. So, with the help of some questionable technology, he embarks on a permanent out-of-body experience and becomes one among a hundred billion ghosts. It doesn't go well, and soon Ryan finds that he wants his life back. For that, he needs to get back into his body. Only now it seems that somebody has stolen it and will do anything to make sure he never finds it. Well... That just seems like, that just seems like a trip to me. And I am here for it. Number five, read a book where the main character is a witch. I can do that. I chose Paybacks, A Witch, and this is by Lana Harper. And I've been wanting to read this for the longest time. And you know what? Halloween can't be all about the ghouls and the goblins, right? Sometimes we have to have a little bit of turmoil and mischievousness and maybe a little romance and a lot of fun. Emily Harlow is a witch, but not a very powerful one, in part because she hasn't been home to the magical town of Thistle Grove in years. Her self-imposed exile has a lot to do with the complicated family history, desire to forge her own way, and only the very tiniest bit to do with Gareth Blackmore heir to the most powerful magical family in town and casual breaker of hearts and destroyer of dreams um yeah so we're gonna have a little bit of romance in this one and i'm okay with it number six read a non-fiction or fiction book set during the month of october or a book that is about halloween last year i read agatha christie's halloween party and i loved it so i wanted to be at that halloween party so i think i'm going to make it a tradition that every october i will read halloween party very fun book and i enjoyed it so Number seven, read a thriller novel by an author you have never heard of before. Okay, I have chosen Taylor Keokyok's Thrillville, USA, and this is a um, book of collective stories. An amusement park employee overdoses after eating the gel of a phenytol patch. Two homeless men discover the body of a drowned person. A woman encounters a dangerous stranger while driving her brother to rehab. Ex-lovers seek to rekindle their relationship with the aid of an earthquake. So there's nine masterful stories and... Um, Let's see. Americans living on the margins of society seek an escape from isolation, underemployment, drugs, boo, self-destructive relationships. While the action is set largely in the rural Pacific Northwest, the characters' um, disaffectionateness are emblematic of the country as a whole. The title takes its name from the aforementioned amusement park, but Thrillville is as much a state of mind as an actual place. All right, what do we got left? We got one book left. I hold one book in my lap. Read a book with a black cover. Oh my goodness, what has Flossie chosen? I don't think you're gonna expect this one at all. I chose Vincent Bugliosi with Kurt Gentry. Do you know where I'm going with this? 
Okay, I won't keep you in suspense any longer. I am going to read Halter Skelter. Yes, I am. So my October is going to be jam-packed with reading. And golly gee, I hope I can do it. <laughs> I think I can. If I just buckle down and I just simmer down, now simmer down, I probably will be able to get all of these books read. I am so looking forward to them. I'm excited about them. <sighs> Until we meet again. I hope whatever you are reading is thrilling you. Until we meet again, know that I love you. Don't let those bad days win, and when you dream, make sure you're dreaming big.